Hey guys, what is up? John here from fly8mikealpha.com here today to finally wrap up our VG story, Vortex Generator story on the Bearhawk Patrol. No, this is not the Bearhawk Patrol. This is a balsa wood airplane. So Vortex Generators, how do they help us and how much do they help us? And also what brand did we end up going with? All right, so if you guys have not already seen part one of this video, link is in the description below. Also, link in the description below to the video on the Vortex Generators, on the VGs, going on the bottom side of the horizontal, on the tail of the airplane. If you guys are curious about how that affected the airplane, how that helped or hurt us, you can check that out as well in the description there. So part one of this video was us playing around with stall speed versus airway VGs. So this little clear plastic guy from Australia versus this little clear plastic guy. So we put all those on the airplane. We tried air wave on one wing, stall speed on the other, did some flip flopping and we decided, hey, you know, we really like stall speed better than air wave. We're seeing a little bit better performance with them. So we're gonna now try our stall speed VG with our Hall Brothers VGs. These are coming from the United States. These are made of aluminum and they are super crazy easy to stick on and off the airplane. We were using that really thin 3M double-sided tape to just temporarily mount things. Actually kind of works pretty well for permanently mounting too. Uh, so putting these on, super easy. Super easy to take them on and off, move them around because there's two in one. So it's literally half as much work as using a little template that comes with the Stoll Speed VGs. Either way, they make it pretty easy to install the Hall Brothers ones or the Stoll Speed ones. They come with that little install kit. They come with the tape. Uh, Hall Brothers actually comes with the permanent glue if you want to glue them in place. So very easy to take on and off the airplane. What we ended up finding through a lot of testing, we're not going to bore you guys with all the tests and the numbers and all that craziness, but we put the 360 cam up there. We put some pieces of yarn on the wing. After we had stripped all the VGs off the airplane to move it from Florida up here to Alaska, we put everything back on there and we started out with the Stoll Speed and the Hall Brothers to see what was going to work for us. And we threw all that yarn up there so we could actually see what was going on on top of the wing throughout the stall as it progressed. Remember, stalls are not just like flying, flying, flying stalled. It's a progressive thing, especially the way we're flying, where you're just eking out every last little bit of performance you can get out of the airplane, going to 14, 15 degrees angle tech, 16 degrees angle tech, 16.1. It's not going to be a really clean break, or at least you don't really want it to be, right? We want to have some twist in the wing. We want our wing tips to keep flying, even when the wing root stalls, so we can get that nice buffet and shake on the stick and on the airframe, letting us know, hey, your wing root is stalled. You're gonna start descending and losing lift, but you still have some aileron control, your wing's still mostly flying, and you just gotta bump that nose down a little bit and get flying again. That's the nice safe characteristics of our airplanes we're looking for. Now, if you want to maximum performance, you'd have a straight wing that's stalled perfectly all at once, and that'd be really efficient, but also kind of scary, so we don't really want that. What we ended up finding between the Hall Brothers and the Stoll Speed is that, well, Hall Brothers instructions only called for about 40 so fins on one wing, where Stoll Speed called for about 56 fins going down the other one using their spacing. So at that setup, we found, yes, yeah, Stoll Speed was better. There's more fins out there on that other wing. So then we said, okay, well, let's try doing Hall Brothers at the same density as the Stoll Speed ones. We found well, that was pretty good, but because they're an overall bigger profile, than the Stoll Speed ones. You can see there's a little bit more aluminum there than this little tiny clear plastic guy. Well, we found there was a little bit more drag. What we ended up finding was overall, once we swapped to just Stoll Speed, we had about a two to three mile per hour decrease in stall speed and about a two mile per hour decrease in cruise speed. So it just kind of shifted our flight envelope down a little bit. It did increase the aileron authority for us. And one thing we did is we put them at 7% of cord on the inboard side of the wing for both Hall Brothers and Stoll Speed, and then we did 6% of cord for our wing tips for about the last four feet or so of the wing, making sure that aileron had really good control authority, had really good smooth airflow. And as you can see, before we had any VGs on here, we already had pretty good airflow over our wing tips at the, as the stall slowly progressed in. So when we slowly started raising that nose up to get to the stall, we still had pretty good control authority, even though our wing root was stalling, we still had pretty good airflow over our wingtip. That's just part of the design of that riblet airfoil with the 66 inch cord that's on the Bearhawk Patrol. Now, it's already a good design, but it was definitely improved. And I think there's things you can do with VGs besides just performance wise. You, you can make your airplane a little bit safer in the sense of when you're sticking them on there, if you're doing seven or eight or 9% of cord on the inboard side and you're putting them further forward on the tips, well, you're going to have better control authority throughout that stall for your ailerons one thing to mention here though, let's just say that the airplane was stalling at 16 degrees angle of attack for some nice round math to begin with. 
By putting on VGs, now we've changed our stalling angle of attack to say 18 or 19 degrees. It stalls at a higher angle of attack. That's what's helping you fly slower. There's also some drag being created by these little vortex generators on top of your wing. Well, the deal is, if you stalled at 16 before and you just had to lower your nose to 15 or 14 degrees angle of attack to get it to fly again, well, now, if you're stalling at 19 degrees angle of attack, you're still gonna have to lower your nose back to 16 or 15 degrees or whatever to get it to start flying again. So I noticed that when you stall it, you really have to let the nose forward a little bit more with the VGs on there to get the wing flying again. And what's cool about the way we set this up is we're able to mush the airplane down. So having those VGs inboard at a further back cord, so at seven or eight percent further back compared to six percent accord on the wing tips, having those VGs a little bit further forward on the wingtips, allowed the wingtips to keep flying while we kind of rode that stall, that really fine line coming down, and allowed the airplane to mush in really nicely while still getting the aileron control. And we're able to do that with basically no wind or very light winds or very steady, smooth headwind. Mix in some crosswind or some wind burbles or some gusts and some swirliness. And no, we need to actually add some approach speed, decrease our angle of attack a little bit, get some more control authority over the airplane as a whole. The Bearhawk didn't have a ton of aileron control coming into this to begin with, and flying it even slower is not going to give you any more aileron control, all right? The Bearhawk is not flying cub approach speeds. Cubs have huge ailerons because they fly super slow. The Bearhawk has smaller ailerons. It flies a little bit faster. It's a 40-some mile per hour airplane coming into land, where the Cub's a 30-some mile per hour airplane when you're coming into land or wheels touching anyways. So although we notice that when you do really rip this nose up and really yank back and really deeply stall the entire wing all at once, that man, it's a really aggressive stall when you put VGs on there because you're stalling at a way higher angle of attack and the recovery is way farther away from you now. And yeah, pretty much every time the airplane wanted to spin on us when we really deeply stalled the wing with VGs, the more stuff you add, like slats or VGs or anything, where you really actually deeply stall the wing, it's going to be way more aggressive and a little bit more dangerous. The flip side of that is I think it can be made a little bit more safe when you stack your VGs kind of like we did, where we're putting them at seven or 8% accord on the inboard side and then 6% accord out in the wing tips to give you more control authority over that wing tip and also assuming that you use the technology correctly, right? You're not gonna yank back on the stick and deeply stall the entire wing all at once. That'd be bad. It's gonna be a lot more aggressive than it normally would be. But if you're just gently riding right on the edge of that stall and you say, oh, oops, I'm, I'm right at the edge of that stall. I'm gonna lower my nose and decrease my angle of attack and increase my airspeed there, well, that's a safety function because you're going to be able to maintain a little bit more aileron control. We definitely noticed more aileron control on the Bearhawk with those VGs farther out there on the wingtip. So that's one way you can increase your safety, but again, to really maximize the increase in safety, the technology has to be used correctly. If you deeply stall the wing after you put VGs on there, it's gonna be even worse, most likely, than without the VGs on there in the first place. To wrap it up, what do I want you guys to know about this stuff, really, is, well, hey, if you're starting out with a Bearhawk or the same airfoil as us, I really believe these stall speed ones work best for that airfoil, and I really believe that every airfoil out there is going to require a slightly different VG, slightly different placement, slightly different spacing, and even consider that the stall speed ones seem to be about a 15 degree angle in, where the Hall Brothers might be about 18 or 19 degrees angled in. So they use slightly different angles, both on the tilt inboard and as well as the spacing and the overall size of the VG. So think about what's gonna work best for your airfoil. Ultimately, these are fairly cheap to play around with. You can, for a few hundred dollars, buy sets of VGs for your airplane and start playing around if you have an experimental. That's a nice thing about experimentals, things are a little bit more affordable, and get a good idea of what's gonna work best for your airfoil. For the riblet airfoil, I'm really a big fan of the Stole Speed ones. I believe that these are good VGs from Airwave, from Stole Speed, from Hall Brothers, and Hall Brothers and Stole Speed do a really good job of making it easy to install them on your airplane. So definitely check out all three brands. At the end of the day, you'll have to do some playing around, some experimenting of your own on your own aircraft to find out what is best for you. Just do so safely, as throughout some of this testing, we got some pretty aggressive stalls slash kind of incipient spins trying out the different VGs and especially trying out different placements on different wings and mixing up the different brands. The last thing we'll talk about is we did actually try rows on the front of the wing, rows in the middle of the wing, and rows towards the trailing edge of the wing and adding more and more VGs all over the wing surface. And while we notice some gain from that as you keep re-energizing that airflow and making it stick all to the back surface of the wing, it was definitely one of those law of diminishing return scenarios where the more VGs you added, the more drag you added, but the less you experienced on the low end. You just got slightly higher angles of attack, less controllability, a lot less forward visibility, and really not a huge decrease in stall speed at that point. 
As far as forward visibility goes, there's not a whole lot of forward visibility in the Bearhawk when you're coming in at a 10 degree deck angle. And that's typically what we approach at when we're coming in super slow with the VGs on the airplane. That's what we feel comfortable coming in at with the VGs set up the way they are right now. As we transition into the flare and come up to about a 15 degree deck angle, touching tailwheel first and those stole competitions landing super short, there is no forward visibility. And no, I don't really want to move these things to six or five or four percent of cord and move the wingtip ones even further forward past six percent of cord where they're already at. Right now we're running seven percent on the inboard, six percent on the tips. I don't really want to move them any more forward, although it would probably allow us to fly at a slightly higher angle of attack. That's only going to kill our forward visibility even more and probably hurt our cruise speed even more without helping us that much on the bottom end anymore. So log diminishing returns. We found what seems to be a happy medium for us moving them forward and back and side to side and changing spacing and all that stuff. Bottom line is the stole speed instructions right out of the box work pretty well. The only difference that we did from stole speed was moving them a little bit further forward on the wingtip and they are tighter spacing on the wingtip as recommended by stole speed in their instruction manual and in their template that they sent along with their VGs. That is it guys. If you have any questions on this, I'm sure you will. Totally fine. Leave it in the comments below. We'd be happy to do what we can to pass along a little bit of knowledge we learned messing with our airplane onto you as you play around with your airplane, trying to get a little bit more performance out of it or possibly even a little bit more margin of safety. And I do believe if you use these things right and put them on correctly and then use them correctly and fly properly, that you can increase your margin of safety when you're out there flying. As always guys, if you cannot fly every day, fly eatmikealpha.com. We'll see you guys in the next one.